So today I'm gonna to be going over 10 fragrances that I have been wearing on a pretty consistent basis for years at this point and I haven't gotten tired of them. And I think this is a pretty cool video because it shows that these have stood the test of time in my collection. You know, my collection really didn't take off with super rapid growth until a couple years back. You know, when I was first starting the channel, I had, I think, maybe 10, 12 bottles total, somewhere in that range, just doing reviews here and there when I could. And then as the channel started to take off, I started to purchase more as my budget would allow, uh, but it really didn't go crazy until, again, a couple years ago. And so now with the selection that I have, and it's a bunch of niche, a bunch of expensive, high-end designers and everything in between, I still find time and I still get a lot of enjoyment out of wearing some of these here or all of these that I started out with essentially. You know, a lot of these I got within the first year or two of collecting. So if you wanna see, you know, what I still wear and enjoy today and just things I haven't gotten tired of yet and I don't think I ever will, this will be the video for you. Maybe these will kind of give you some inspiration for your next pickup because all of these are super pleasant and they're just ones that you just can't really get sick of. A couple things, uh, for a lot of these, I either have backup bottles or have gone through a bottle and then had to purchase another one. So if you see some full bottles and you're trying to call my bluff, I have backup bottles of a lot of things. Some will be the case here. Others though, you'll be able to see the bottle ran down to the complete end pretty much. It's kind of a funny sight to see because you don't normally see that often, especially with a lot of the new stuff I've been picking up within the past few years that still look basically full. I'll link all these down below for you if you want to get any of them. And also, I want to point you over to my mailing list at the first link. Uh, if you want to pick up any sort of rare fragrance that you might have on your radar, everything from you know Dior Fahrenheit Le Parfum to you know your Low Medial Extreme, Dolce Gabbana, The One Luminous Night, uh, even like, I don't know, Moogler Angelman, the original, which is now getting hard to find, just a whole bunch of stuff like that, Prada Loam Intense, get on that mailing list. I post when those things come in stock and they do sell out quick, so make sure you're checking your inbox. I also do the same thing over on my community tab if you don't want to do the email thing. Let's get things kicked off with Valentino Womo Aqua. So this is a full, what is this? It's 150 ml, I think is what it is, something like that. 150 ml backup. Uh, I started off with a 100 ml or, or the equivalent of that, the normal size. I think these might have came in like an oddball size instead of just a standard 100, but I can't remember for sure. But what I do know is this scent was my first Valentino Womo. Yes, I got this DNA before I got Womo Intense in the original and this was before the Born in Romas and all that stuff. And what intrigued me about this one initially was the tomato leaf accord. When you look on Fragrantica now, it's just tomato. However, when you click on it, it says it has a you know the smell of tomato leaf. But back in the day when I was getting this one, it was listed as tomato leaf. And it does kind of give you this green, leafy, slightly tomato-y smell, but not a whole lot. It's mostly just kind of an aromatic green leafy with some iris and some other citrus and freshness. It's a really well done flanker. When I found out that this was disc continued, I ended up grabbing myself a backup bottle that you see here in this larger size. You can actually still get this one though on FragranceNet for a really, really good price. $68 for like 4.2 ounce tester or something like that. Again, it's kind of an oddball size. I recommend you guys to jump on this if you are a fan of the Womo line and if you want the freshest Valentino Womo. It's a really unique iris, nothing else like this one. It even strays pretty far away from the original Womo and Womo Intense, so there's no redundancy. I've had this one for a long time and it is great, especially in the springtime coming up. Very refreshing. Alrighty, next up we have Tommy Bahama Set Sail St. Bart's. Been using this stuff heavily for a long time, and I've described this many times, but for new viewers, this is the perfect scent to take with you on vacation, especially maybe a beach vacation. And what you like to do with this, spray your beach towels, okay? It gives them such this nice, this tropical, vacation-y, um, you know, margarita, just smell. I mean, this is salty, it's limey, it uh, has a little bit of a booziness, of course. It is a very well done scent for basically $20 all over the place. 
discounters, rack stores, whatever. I mean, this is very easy to get for next to nothing price. You could spray it on heavily because if you are gonna wear this on skin, it is not the best performer. Apply it heavily, don't hold back. You're not gonna offend anyone. It smells great. It is the perfect scent to get you in the vacation mode. And again, spray your beach towels, spray the, the room that you're staying in, you know, if you're renting a house or a condo or whatever, just spray the whole place. It's gonna smell amazing. Love this stuff. Kind of staying on that cheaper bandwagon here with another one, uh, Abercrombie & Fitch First Instinct Eau de Toilette. So here's what I'm talking about. I mean, that bottle, that's pretty sad. Now, again, when you're talking about these in particular and St. Bart's, same deal, weaker fragrances, you're gonna run through them quicker most likely because again, you are gonna be applying them much heavier than you would a stronger scent, right? However, it would still take you a decent amount of time to, to work your way through one of these, especially if you're using it seasonally like I do. I don't touch this stuff in winter or fall or even spring. This is pretty much a summertime exclusive for me. And again, it's another one that's very tropical, very laid back. This one has this really unique melon accord with some black pepper or some woods in here. This is super, I don't know, relaxing, playful, fun, just summer scent, you know, very nice. And I love it. I have backup bottles and First Instinct Extreme is also really good, but I do wear this one more, the Eau de Toilette. It's better for the warmer weather. Okay, moving along, we have YSL Loam, the original. So my original bottle was a 100 mil, so half the size of this. I do have another 100 mil, but it's not my original bottle. And it got used up completely. And the bottle, again, it was completely empty, so I just threw it away. I have some bottles that are really low, but they still have a little bit left, and so for obvious reasons, I hold on to them. Not that bottle alone, completely toasted. It felt kind of sad throwing it away, so I don't actually have that one anymore. I went on eBay, I found myself an older batch, it's kind of similar to the year that I had of the original loam, you know, the one that I burned through. Found myself, again, an older batch and a big 200 mil like this, and this is one of the bottles that I have now. I also have another 100, but uh, I'll just kind of swap between whichever one I feel like grabbing. I love this stuff, very nostalgic, a gentleman's classic, and you know, people are gonna call this boring, it's gonna be lame to some people, and I totally understand that. And look, if you're looking to buy a loam scent, probably better off going with the flanker now in 2023, or better yet, going with Lanouille de Loam or any of those flankers as well. However, for me, it's got a special place in my heart. From time to time in spring, I still wear it pretty consistently. I just love this stuff. Let's keep it moving with Bulgari Man in Black. So there was a point in time where this was actually more affordable than Spice Bomb if I'm remembering correctly. Like now on discounters, 100 mil, 80 bucks, sometimes 90, it's quite expensive. Uh, I believe there was a point, and I could be wrong, but I think I'm, I'm pretty close as where you could get it for like 50 for 100 mil. And at the time, Spice Bomb Eau de Toilette on discounters even was more expensive than it is now. Now Spice Bomb is actually more affordable than the Bulgari. It's like they switched roles. But initially, I ended up getting this one very early on because I wanted that Spice Bomb deal, but I really didn't want to spend the full money on Spice Bomb. And what I like about this is it has a little bit of rum in here, so a different variety of sweetness and also a booziness as well. So it's a little bit more of a grown-up mature take on Spice Bomb. I really like it a lot. Loved it back then and I still wear it now and you'll see I feature this one nowadays still as with a lot of these. I mean they are just timeless staples in my collection. You guys are recognized this one as well here on the channel. This is my very first bottle, my original, of Dior Homme Cologne. So um, they don't quite look like this anymore. Uh, the coloration on this is beautiful. I don't think it's quite this dramatic on some of the newer bottles. Could be wrong though. You get that really cool blue tint, uh, the name on the bottom there. Again, this is you know the first bottle that started it for me. Now I have two 200 mils. Don't ask me why, but I do. And so generally speaking, I'll go for those during the summertime. And because this was my first bottle and I love the scent so much, there's kind of just one of those things where I want to preserve my first bottle. I've done the same with uh, another scent you'll see at the very end that I'll touch on. But yeah, I love this one. I've said it before, but if you are bothered by fragrances generally in the summertime, you know, especially if you work outside construction, roofing, whatever, you probably aren't usually going to be too concerned about what scent you're wearing. But if you want something refreshing and something that won't get on your nerves, this would be one of the only scents I could possibly think of to wear when it is July, August, scorching hot, humid, this is the one. 
Kind of following a similar trend with Versace Man Au Fresh. This was the fragrance that started my collection along with Nautica Voyage. I've said that ad nauseum here on the channel, but to anyone that's new. And actually, I don't even think this is my original bottle. I have another one, I can't find it. It's also very low. I've worn a ton of this. It's another deal where I apply it heavily. It's not the best performer, but it's another great tropical citrus summertime scent. Very carefree, very relaxing. It's all about the star fruit, the grapefruit, uh, the bergamot, the musk, all of that stuff in here amazing stuff. I mean, it, there's nothing else like it. And that is what's cool. And you cannot say that about everything out there, especially what's being put out nowadays. There is a lot of um, kind of repetition going on, but not this. One of a kind, great stuff, cannot get tired of it. Let's keep it moving with Azaro Wanted by Night. So this one, you know, I picked up because I wanted to check it out. It was getting a ton of hype when it first came out. And before that, I had wanted the original, still have it, but ended up getting rid of it, and then I bought it back to do a buying guide. I didn't like the original. I really did not just find any sort of usefulness for it. It didn't sit with me the way that other fragrances in my collection did. So going into this, I was a little bit skeptical, got it in, tried it pretty much immediately. I was hooked on it, and still to this day, it features high in my fall and winter lists and just generally in, in videos that I'm doing in the winter time and when it's cold and I'm, you know, generally my, my selection for videos will shift depending on what time of year it is. So whenever it's cold, whenever I can feature Wanted by Night, I try to throw it in because I think bang for your buck wise, about mid $50 range for 100 mil, it's one of the best you can buy. It's tobacco, fruity notes, some cinnamon, warm, spicy, and nighttime scent, great compliment getter, great performance. I mean, you've heard it a million times. I'll stop there, but this is amazing. Second to last, we have Chanel Allure Homme Sport O Extreme. So it's all about the mint, tonka, a little bit of orange off the rip here. It's um, kind of aldehydic as well, creamy, sweet, but a little bit um, it's kind of minty, fresh, a little bit of a kick off the top. You know, this is, um, everybody knows it. It got hyped up a ton. And this is one of my first premium purchases. This, I didn't have niche yet at this point, um, but this was really me splurging. And I bought it from Notino back here. Remember when it was available in the US, you know, OGs would know now, notino.com was the place. And they actually got busted because of this right here. And they had to close shop. They were selling Chanel's at below retail. And that's a big no-no. They got sued, they had to jump ship. They're still available across the pond, um, I, I think in most places, but not in the US. And so, you know, this type of thing right here, this very bottle may have contributed to them getting completely busted. I got this for well under retail, right around 100 bucks, which made it not that bad, especially when I didn't have a lot of money when I was starting out. Great premium purchase for me starting out. To this day, I still love it and I still wear it quite often, especially in the spring, early, early summer, you know, that's kind of my prime time for this one. And last up, I saved it till the end because it's such an obvious one that it's just, so many people are like, yeah, we get it, but it's it's Aqua de Joe Profumo. My original bottle right here, I get, so that's kind of what I was talking about with Dior Homme Cologne. I don't actually really wear this one anymore. It's about right here. And so I'm close to finishing it. I don't want to because I just want to preserve some of that. First bottle and, um, I've got a ton more now. I've got quite a few of the 75 mLs that I wear out of, and I got a giant, um, was it 200 mil? Um, yeah, this is it. Still to this day, I wear it a ton. I even wear it in winter, even though I don't like to as much. I prefer wearing this in summertime and spring. I like the heat on this. I love how the incense patchouli opens up in the heat. Not everyone does. Uh, but from time to time in the winter time, when I want something fresher, this will usually be my go-to. I just love it. I can't get enough of it. Probably never will. It's a parfum. It wears great on my skin. It's just it for me. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. 10 fragrances that I've been wearing consistently for years that I just haven't gotten tired of and I don't think I ever will at this point. So these have stood the test of time in my collection. I've got plenty to choose from, but I still go back to these quite often. Let me know down below, what are some similar scents for you that you've been wearing since the beginning that you still wear to this day? Uh, let me know, I'm kind of curious. Another one could have been Nautica Voyage for me. Believe it or not, I still wear Nautica Voyage in the summertime when I want a cheapy dumb reach. And uh, you know, it's just, it's things like that. That's kind of entertaining, but I love them.
Links will be down below. Deals will be on the community tab and the mailing list. If you guys want to get some hot, rare gems, some great deals, that's going to be the place. The mailing list is completely free to sign up for. And so it's a great tool for you. You could save a ton of money and you can get some very rare, hard to find things. It's been crazy that things sell out quick, but I'm glad I'm able to help you guys because there's been so many times in the past for me where I tried to get my hands on rare things and I couldn't get them. It's very frustrating. So hopefully it helps you out. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.